first off, let me say this. There are some major spoilers ahead and some graphic content. So if you haven't seen Night of the Living Dead yet, then, well, you've been warned. Let's begin. George Romero pretty much set the bar high when it came to the zombie genre. The atmosphere, the character development, the unsettling feeling of danger at every turn. That was what made a great zombie flick. Romero's first outing into the zombie genre was Night of the Living Dead, made in 1968. It spawned many sequels and the 2009 remake. But the remake actually pales in comparison to the original. We start with Barbara and her brother Johnny arriving at a cemetery in Pennsylvania. They're visiting their father's grave. And Johnny obviously doesn't want to be there and makes every effort to make his sister feel uncomfortable. He just wants to scare her. But soon, the real terror begins when they're approached by a strange man, obviously out of his mind as he attacks them, knocking Johnny back and cracking his skull on a gravestone, killing him instantly. Do you remember one time when we were small, we were out here? It was from right over there. I jumped out at you from behind the tree, and Grandpa got all excited, and he shook his fist at me, and he said, Boy, you be damned to hell! <laughs> Remember that? Right over there. Well, you used to really be scared here. Johnny! You're still afraid. Stop it now, I mean it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it! You're acting like a child! They're coming for you! Look! There comes one of them now. He'll hear you. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. Johnny! Obviously scared out of her wits, makes a run for it. The stranger chases her through the cemetery, but she makes it back to the car. Unfortunately, she finds that Johnny had the keys on him. The shambling figure attacks the car, banging on the window. But in a last-ditch effort, Barbara releases the emergency brake and it rolls down the hill. She makes her escape. <laughs> Later, she finds herself in an abandoned house with no signs of life. Soon after, another survivor named Ben comes in. He tries to get information from her about what's going on, but due to her recent encounter, she stays in a nearly catatonic state. He decides the best course of action is to find as much wood as they can to start boarding up the windows and doors. 
Ben soon discovers more survivors hiding in the basement. Harry Cooper, his wife Helen, and sick daughter. Tom and his girlfriend Judy. Ben and Harry argue about which would be safer, hiding in the basement or staying upstairs. Harry says that it's safer downstairs, but Ben says that upstairs would be better and they would have a better chance of escaping. Harry doesn't agree and locks himself downstairs with his wife and daughter. But his wife tells him that they should stay upstairs, thinking that they would have a better chance of survival. Later, Ben discovers a television, and the whole group watches the emergency broadcaster, who reveals that the murderers are recent dead human beings who have returned to life and are consuming human flesh. This is the latest disclosure in a report from National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead are coming back to life and seeking human victims. It's hard for us here to believe what we're reporting to you, but it does seem to be a fact. As they're watching TV, Ben notices that there's a nearby town called Willard as one of the relief stations and devises a plan to escape using his truck, but it needs refueling. While Harry throws Molotov cocktails out a second floor window at the Walking Dead outside the house, Ben exits the house armed with a rifle and a flaming torch. Tom and Judy offer assistance, but when they arrive at the fuel pump near the house, Tom carelessly splashes gasoline on the torch, starting a fire that quickly spreads to the truck. The truck explodes with Tom and Judy inside. Let's get out of here! Come on, come on! My jacket's gone! The house soon goes dark when the area loses power. Perhaps triggered by the darkness, the ghouls surrounding the house begin to attack, attempting to break through all of the boarded up windows and doors. Ben manages to hold them back, but drops his rifle, and Harry seizes the fallen rifle and turns it on Ben, who wrestles it away from Harry, but then shoots him. Harry stumbles into the basement, approaching Karen's seemingly lifeless body, and dies. Helen does her best to keep the zombies at bay, but the numbers are just too great. She retreats into the basement where she encounters her daughter, now transformed into one of the undead. She lashes out at her mother and stabs her with a cement trowel. Karen!
undead finally break into the house, and Barbara sees her brother Johnny among them. The shock causes her to lower her defenses, and she is soon carried away by the zombie horde. <laughs> Ben retreats into the basement, locking the doors behind him, which, ironically, was Harry's plan all along. He shoots the reanimated Harry and Barbara Cooper. In the morning, a posse approaches the house and proceeds to kill the remaining zombies. Hearing the commotion, Ben cautiously goes up the basement stairs into the living room, but is shot in the head by an overzealous posse member who mistakes him for one of the undead. His body is carried away from the house and burned with the zombie corpses. You, drag that out of here and throw it on the fire. There's nothing down here. All right, go ahead down and give him a hand. Let's go check out the house. Man. There's something in there. I heard a noise. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Good shot. Okay, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire. Night of the Living Dead set the standards pretty high, and many filmmakers can learn from George Romero. With just a limited budget, he gave us a rather unsettling and fun movie viewing experience. The cookie-cutter horror movies we get today is nothing compared to the genius of Romero. If you liked this, be sure to comment and thumbs up. You can also contact me through 4B Studios at yahoo.com and my Twitter. Till next time, that's it for me. They're coming to get you, Barbara.